The Labour Party's plans to tackle unemployment offer several key points, centering on a shift from punitive to supportive welfare measures. Employment Minister Alison McGovern has emphasised the need for significant reform to Job Centre Plus, aligning it with the foundational principles of the welfare state, as envisaged by William Beveridge. Labour aims to increase the UK's employment rate to 80%. It's already very good, higher than it has been for over 160 years. Central to achieving this is the reconfiguration of Job Centre Plus, from a system focused heavily on policing the benefit system to one prioritising assistance in securing meaningful employment. Current requirements for claimants to spend 35 hours per week searching for work has been criticised as draconian by experts such as Tony Wilson of the Institute of Employment Studies. And the Labour Party sees this as counterproductive, with many job seekers viewing the system as punitive rather than supportive. The result is an increase in people claiming incapacity benefits and avoiding job centres altogether. <laughs> if, you, if you want to uh, get another job, there's no point in filling out lots of forms. You get further, you, you, you spend your time learning new skills, I should have thought. That would be the priority, training and education rather than form filling. 35 hours a week searching for work is rather absurd. Labour's approach, as outlined by McGovern, is to reduce the overbearing focus on sanctions and redirect resources towards providing tangible support. This would include scrapping the 35-hour search requirement for those with health conditions and young children. By doing so, they hope to free up advisors to offer more meaningful assistance to job seekers, including those not currently claiming benefits. The vision is for job centres to become open to the wider public, not just those receiving welfare, encouraging broader engagement with employment services. The changes Labour proposes come with a price tag, however, estimated at an additional £150 million annually. And McGovern has argued that the long-term benefits, including increased employment and reducing reliance on state benefits, would far outweigh these upfront costs. Labour sees this as an investment in a more inclusive and effective employment support system, one that ultimately reduces the strain on public finances by fostering greater participation in the workforce. But I don't see that what she's offering is much more than a big advertising campaign. And I don't think that necessarily changes the nature of the system. The system needs to be brought more closely into a, a much more flexible educational system. In essence, Labour's plans... Uh, suggests a cultural shift within welfare and employment support, moving away from the current emphasis on sanctions towards a model that prioritises employment as a path to economic security for everyone, including the most vulnerable. But I'm not sure that it's actually going to deliver. The rhetoric is there. The reality is some distance away. The goal is not just higher employment numbers, but a more humane, supportive regime that aligns with Beveridge's original vision of a welfare state built on mutual support and opportunity for all. That much is good, but whether it actually produces any benefits is an entirely different matter.